Hey guys, I am sitting here with Tanner Miller and we're going to do a quick interview on how we joined and made an MLS Next Academy. Tanner, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Alright, let's tell everybody, how old are you? I'm 13 years old. 13, and who do you play for currently? I play for Atlanta City. Alright, so who did you previously play for? I play for Florida Elite down in Tallahassee. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about how you went from Tallahassee to Orlando City. What was that pathway like? So I was playing down here in Tallahassee and I decided to go play. I decided to go try out for ODP. And when I wanted to go try out for ODP, I made the team. And then we had regional tryouts. And so I made the regional tryouts. So we went down to Tennessee and I got scouted by Orlando City down in Tennessee. And that's how I went to go play for Orlando City. Okay, so ODP was was a pathway to get into MLS Next since there is no MLS team in Tallahassee. You got scouted and uh, they contacted you and you went and tried out for Orlando City and you played a full season with Orlando City last year. And what was what was that schedule like? Because you still lived in Tallahassee, right? So pretty much, I went to I did, I still did public school, but I missed public school two times a week because I had to go to practice down in Orlando two times a week. So I pretty much traveled to Orlando eight, uh, eight hours a week, missing public school two times a week, which was hard keeping up with schoolwork, but I managed it. And so that's how I, and our schedule, we had games on Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays, and I couldn't hang out with friends or anything like that. So I had to just keep my mindset together and travel down to Orlando. That's great. That's uh, quite a, a sacrifice. Um, who are, you know, along the way, some of the coaches that have helped you progress? Well, I had Coach Joel, which was my previous Florida League coach. He helped me with my abilities and, like, working on technical work and everything like that. Also, I had someone uh, named Coach Bruno, which also helped me. And, and uh, this guy in Ohio named... Um, Mike Brown, he, when I went down to Ohio, he got out of his way to go train me, watch my games, and help me improve. And also, from my coach last season, Stell, he got my mindset together, he did everything, he got my technical work up, he just pretty much made me a better player overall. Awesome. So let, let's talk about a, a few of the, the trainings you do, and, you know, last season, over half your goals were headers. What's, uh, how did you become so good at heading the ball? What is one of the things you do? So one of the things I did is one day I had a private training session with my previous coach, Del, which we went to this pool. He made me swim in the deep end and I was dog piling. He made me do over 50 headers in the deep end. And he was throwing it to me and I was just getting tired. I was working on the power of my headers and all that. And one thing I also do, which is a boost is something called the jump shoes. It makes you faster, it makes you jump higher, it just makes your acceleration better. That's how I'm also one of the fastest people on the pitch. Jump shoes, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna show those here. Those are kind of like a little kept secret from the mid 90s and you notice that, what do you do with the jump shoes? You, you jump rope, do box jumps, uh, I jump rope for around five minutes constantly without messing up, and I also will do some box jumps. I'll start off small, then I'll go higher and higher, and I also, we have this driveway that goes uphill, and I also do something I like to call frog jumps, is where you squat down and jump forward, which is very good for your acceleration, which boosts you. Awesome. Um, so... There's a lot of people when you go to ODP and there's a lot of kids there and you know you, you just had this uh, where you got invited to, to the national U.S. National uh, Talent ID Day. Uh, how do you stand out and get noticed with all those kids there? So pretty much one thing I get noticed with is yeah they look for talent and stuff but one thing they really like to look for and what I am best at is my work ethic on the field and never giving up on a play and always working like the hardest worker on the field. If I'm not the most technical, I know I have to be the most hard worker on the field. And one thing I, that I stand out in the National ID set, uh, training session was that this one play where it, where this 
where our teammate lost the ball and I was at half field and he got a way head start, like a 20, head, 20 yard head start. I chased him down. He was in the box about to take a shot and I slide tackled him, got all ball and I stopped him from scoring it. And that'll pop up on the screen just now. And now that you've made the, the academy, you're full time, you live in Orlando now. Tell everybody what the academy schedule is like. It is it's very tiring at the start, but you'll get used to it. It's like you, well, for me, I wake up at 6.30, get a good breakfast in before, and then you have to be at the academy by 7.45. You get there at 7.45, you get dressed, you get ready, and all that. And then at 8 o'clock, the training session starts, you do all that. And at, um, yeah, at, it'll go, practice will go to like 11 o'clock, two hours long, sometimes two hours and a half. And after that, you, you go get a protein shake, you do that, you do some rehab, you stretch, you do all that, and then you go up to school at 11.30, um, you get some breaks during school, but after your school, school ends about like 2.50, depending if you have second training, we mostly have second training. Second training is like 3 o'clock to 4, and then after that, you can shower, and then pretty much you just go home, rest. And then you do it again tomorrow. That's a that's a grueling schedule. That so that that schedule is every day except for game days, right? Yep. So, with all the work ethic it takes, you do academy. You're doing it all day. Where what do you do after academy? Are you still working? Are you still mm -hmm. trying to get better? So the I after academy like. What, I'll probably go home and rest for about an hour and a half, and then after that, I'll either go outside, do the jump shoes, work on some technical work, or I'll go to the gym, especially since I play striker, got to work on your muscle, like, muscle, just being the biggest on the field, especially when you're 2009 playing up, just trying to be one of the strongest out there, and so, yeah, I probably work out, or use the jump shoes, do all that four times a week, I'll, on Fridays, be like, I won't work out because we have game day, so I'll just rest the whole day, relax, carb up, eat some food. All right, so what academics, let's talk academics. Some people might think it's easier. What kind of standards do does the Orlando City Academy hold you to? It, it holds you to a good standard. You have to have 80% or higher. You They give you a pace chart. You have to... You have to stay in pace with the pace chart. You cannot, if you have a grade under 80% or you're just not ahead in school or staying with school and you're behind, you won't play You'll, or you won't practice. You won't practice or play and you'll just be doing schoolwork until you get your work up. Wow, so 80%, that's uh, holding a 3.0 or higher. Uh, when I was in public school, it was... 2.0, sometimes a 1.8, and you could still play. So they hold you to a pretty high standard academically, which is which is really great. Now, as far as now that you don't live in Tallahassee, what did you have to sacrifice to make this decision to go full time with an academy? There's a lot of sacrifices that I needed to do, like not hang out with friends, like just miss my friends at public school, go to practice. Especially on Saturdays and Sundays when there will be parties, I know I'll be out having games or just working out, doing all that. And when when they're all having fun on like the school days, I'll be at practice. I know that, so you just gotta keep that out of your head and keep working. And one thing is, if the only way you're gonna make it is if you put your mind to what you love best. And I put my mind to soccer, and I focus on soccer. If there would be a party on, say, like a Wednesday when I didn't have practice or anything, when I didn't travel, I'll just work out, keep keep my mind together, and just focus on soccer. All right. So, if if college ends up being your pathway, let everyone know what what would be your your dream college to go to, or where would you like to go play soccer? There's a lot of good colleges out there. I'll have to say Clemson. They're like one of the best. I would sit for soccer, and I'll say. Akron too, a good call, a good college for soccer in my hometown, and I also put in Notre Dame out there, very good school. There's there's a lot I can name out there. 
All right. So before we wrap it up, an important thing with athletes is nutrition. And being 13 years old, most kids don't have the mindset to eat that well. What What's your nutrition like and how do you keep your body from breaking down with all this heavy training? The, the most important thing for me if in my meals are breakfast because like that's what gets me ready for uh, practice in the morning. You got to eat good. A, a good breakfast would be some Greek yogurt with granola, good good protein, good carbs, some eggs is very good. Don't be afraid to eat a lot. Just make sure it's healthy like eggs and toast. That's good. And then after that lunch, the academy gives us lunch and it's very good. It's potatoes, carrots, they give you chicken for that protein, rice, all that. And dinner, after dinner, dinner's gotta be one of the most important carb up after practice so your body rebuilds that muscles. Also protein's very important. Get a good 80, get your, try to get your body weight, amount of protein of your body weight. So I weigh 137, I get like, try to get 137 grams of protein in me. Uh, I'll say for dinner, get good vegetables and some pasta. That's like the best thing you could have. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it here up here. Uh, thank you, Tanner, for all this information. What advice can you give young players who have a dream of making it to this level? What are you know? What do coaches like to see, and what have you seen from everything? So one thing, if you want to get your dream, is the work like this like when you don't have practice work hard if your friends invite you somewhere but you know you you want to make it this keep working your mentality has to be the strongest if you if you want to give up tell you you tell yourself you don't want to give up and what coaches look for the most is if you like they obviously look for talent you want to be talented but that what they look for the most is obsession you want to want want the game more than anything because there's obviously going to be people out in the world more talented than you, so you got to know you got to be the hardest worker out on the field and off the field. That's great. And one thing I've noticed in your growth as a player is, you know, not trying to dribble through three or four players and making the easy play. How much do these coaches at this level stress making the easy play and keeping possession? It's so me as a striker, knowing that, like, all the strikers when I dribble have all the fame, the score – me as a player, I'll hold the defender off my back. They always look for the simple play, like what a striker likes to do. Lay it off, make a run. It's the best thing you could do as a striker is just make runs and like play the simple play. One touch, don't try and turn and dribble. And the only reason you have a reason to dribble is when it's a one-on-one -on -one in the final third and you know you can beat him one-on-one. -on -one. And just always make the simple play. That's what coaches look for. And if you lose the ball, win it back. Great advice, Tanner. Um... For any of the players watching this, if you have any questions for Tanner, leave a comment below and he'll answer them. Uh, if you need any help uh, trying to get to this level, let him know. He'll, he'll help you out. And Tanner, uh, thank you for the interview. You're welcome.